we go to another topic where we have uh, Mark and Disregard Fiat on stage, and we will talk about the SPK network testnet plus Honeycomb and implications of the future of P2P storage technology. Who? Okay, you will explain this with way more easy word. And he brought a friend and business colleague on stage who doesn't want to have a microphone. We solved this. <laughs> um, and Mark and um, Disregard Fiat know each other quite a while. They've been together on a Navy aircraft carrier. And I heard some stories that you might tell later on with a beer or it belongs to you. Um, I, I don't know where you are coming from at the moment because we made this last minute. So introduce yourself with a few words and disregard Fiat, you were on stage already. I um, repeat that you live in wonderful Paraguay um, and um, <laughs> have some um, activity with your funny NFT pick. I still don't fully understand, but you have a few minutes to explain it now or maybe later. So if, if you've seen my NFT, the one that I have on my profile picture, I'm wearing a Borat mankini, and it's because I went to a swimsuit competition that ended with me getting arrested in a Borat mankini. Bit closer. Sorry. Did anybody not understand that? Or do anybody know better? We, we got it. Again? I think we got it. <laughs> and we c could imagine the pictures. The pictures are amazing. Just yeah. ask me. Okay. You stage, 20 minutes, have some fun. We have... Uh, five, ten minutes for questions afterwards. All right. Fantastic. Hey, everybody. Yeah, so like he said, I'm Marky Giles. Most of you probably don't know me, but I do, um, whereas he does a lot of back-end development, I do a lot of front-end development and figuring out, like, uh, user interfaces and how people might actually use some of these crazy decentralized file storage protocols. Um, so that's why I'm up here, to, to kind of be the yin to the yang. Yeah, it's true because, like, say, Matt or Dan will ask for a feature, and we're like, yeah, that's possible, and then he'll be like, this doesn't seem even remotely usable. <laughs> so it, it, there's a big process that goes into all of this stuff, and we're, we're getting pretty close to feature complete on at least the speed network, and we're going to show off some of what Honeycomb can do, in fact. That's right. Um... Boy, it is. Oh, uh, you could probably have to click it a couple of times there. Yeah. So Deluxe uh, IO is a progressive web app, and uh, that's PWA for short. And if anyone doesn't know what a progressive web app is, it's a website that behaves a lot like a native app. And with every operating system release from both Apple and Android, their progressive web app support gets better each and every time. And so uh, like PeakD is a fantastic PWA. Deluxe uh, this year finally became a full mobile friendly PWA. And we really see this as a huge opportunity for Hive because it allows you to do most of the things that you can do on your phone, but without being in an app store. And so it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of um, what you can do when app stores are not so crypto friendly. And so Deluxe became a PWA. Uh, we're building new features all the time. And we're um, finally announcing our own way to sign in without Keychain or Hive Auth or Hive Signer, but allowing people to store their keys locally in their PWA, which is something that PWAs are fantastic for. You can store your keys locally, and it's uh, not a problem at all if you trust the site. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of this goes back to the fact that we have a, a system of censorship resistant data on our Hive layer, but if you want to build a community of it or, or some variety like that, you need to have a way to have your users get to that data. So having these open source client side rendered um, front ends that allow people to get access to their data, they would still be able to upload a video to 3Speak or do anything like this. All they have to do is copy our code change Deluxe to whatever your name is and put it somewhere else. We encourage this. We want mirrors of everything, just like we have Peak D and Hive Blog and Easy C. So hopefully this is how it goes in the future. Yeah, everything we put out is open source. So we see a future of clonable user interfaces where, you know, if you're a content creator and you see an interface that you like, you go and clone that interface and now it's yours. You can rebrand it your own way and bring your own community to it. So 
Honeycomb is uh, a layer two, and just like everything else we, we've talked about, but, um, we have a few different options for layer two on Hive. So you have Hive Engine, for instance, and Hive Engine's got a lot better people. It's actually decentralized. Um, but the problem is it gets pretty, pretty chunky really fast. Like, if I want to run a community for, you know, maybe we really like beer. So we can go out here and now I have to run everybody else's community and it, it gets a little too beefy for just me and I, maybe I don't want to want to do that kind of thing. So this also lets you take more of a, a personal approach to what you actually want to run. So if I want to run a speak network node and a deluxe node, I can do that without running, say, the beer node on, on Hive Engine. Um, these are all multi-signature enabled, so the community will still have trusted people to run the wallet. It has an integrated deck, so you don't have to worry about, oh, how am I going to list my coins? It's, it just runs. Yeah, what, what you can't really make out on this screen right now is just screenshots of our PWA. And what we've got here, we're showing off our decentralized exchange, which currently has three different tokens. Uh, that's been up for quite a while. We, some days, there's uh, actually pretty heavy volume through there. Um, then also we have our wallet, which supports um, our own system of power up and our own system of governance. So it, it really gives any community the flexibility to, to have a full governance structure with, you know, power ups, governing ups, things like that. And then finally, the NFT marketplace. We do allow uh, for minting uh, NFTs on, on our layer two, and we have a full fledged marketplace for that. Right, and as more people use Honeycomb for different things, the logic that powers, say, an NFT market or um, the Speak Network, those are just pieces of code that you can copy and paste into whatever your logic is. So as, as more people use it, hopefully it gets more user-friendly and with more features. Um, also, the fact that these things are just powered by an API. So all I have to do is start a new community, type in an API, and suddenly the DEX works the NFT marketplace would work if you have NFTs enabled on yours. So we're, we're just trying to make a wallet for everybody as well. Yeah. Speak network stuff. Um, it's going to be really wild how this evolves because right now we're talking about incentivizing storage of any file that you can prove you're hosting on IPFS, essentially. Um, and so the implications for that are insane once you decentralize file storage, um, you know, and, and we are creating interfaces that allow users to, uh, to control what that looks like. Um, me as a node operator, I could choose which content I want to pin and host. Um, you know, I'm in California, so the implications of the content that I'm storing on my hard drive could be vastly different than what somebody, you know, in another country could be storing uh, legally. And so I think um, having the flexibility in terms, just like when you choose a server, where are you storing your files, which country or which jurisdiction are you in, what are the implications with putting your data there, uh, we're going to start to see a lot of that as we move into decentralized file storage as well. It's going to be really fascinating to see how it evolves. That That is very true. Like, we really just couldn't release a file storage system without some sort of ability to individually censor or, or uh, work the network that way. Um, just, just on a personal standpoint, like, there's a lot of content that I wouldn't want on the system, but at the same time, other people, well, we can't say for everything. I won't agree, but some people think, oh, I should be able to store anything I want. Um, and it's our job as a community of people who use this to not incentivize them to store stuff we don't agree with. Um, so we have the ability to choose what we store. We also have the ability to choose what we incentivize. But at the same time, it's still censorship resistant. Um, and, and part of this is, it's a complex system. It's a complex operation. And like Mark was saying, or like what I was saying, Mark tells me, like, this isn't just possible. So we have up here, uh, like, a create contract screen, and I'm sure you can't see it. But it is also just as easy to say, have three speak run the contracts. And as soon as you log in with your username, they create the contract for you. And the only additional step besides upload is sign. So you're just saying, I personally sign this so we can track the providence and integrity of these files all the way through their, their lifespan. I can't, I can't yeah. see <laughs> What's next? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's the contract. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> there um, could be as well a monitor in front of you, but I think there's as much fun yeah. on it. Yeah, I, I don't even, I, I see black here. I Actually, I can check my hat. <laughs> what, what, what's on the screen is it's a, a post that's just under 20 megabytes in terms of data size, and it shows how long the contract exists for it to stay pinned in IPFS. And any other user who wants to come and see that content and say, actually, I feel this content is very valuable, I want to extend that pinning contract by a week or by a year or whatever it is. We're giving individual user control over the ability to actually pay to store that content for longer. And I, I don't think this is a feature most users are going to want, but this is where we need to start so that we can build it manually and then begin to automate it from there. Yeah, it's, it's not just like, oh, I want to pay to store this or pay to get it more stored. You can go on there yourself and say, I want to store this. And as long as you have the software set up like you're running a node, your node will say, oh, he wants to store it now. It'll grab it for you and you'll start being uh, paid to have it. So it, it lets you say like, oh, I'm involved in this community. I'm going to store this content because it's what interests me. And maybe you're not even into it for the incentivization. Let's see. Right. Yeah. So another thing is this is more than videos. We can store our config files. We can store our logic for our smart contracts. We can do anything that a computer would do on IPFS with this, which allows, you know, Honeycomb in general just to get more and more easy to use. I would be able to decentralize a storage of some UI that I could then build a, a config file, build some smart contracts, store that on IPFS, and then anybody else who wants to join the community just has to download the software and type in a code, and it'll just self-assemble itself. And so this is all running the Speak testnet, which is up and running um, for the most part. And, uh, you know, we're, we're finding the finding the the holes but we're plugging them right so i think nathan's going to actually talk about the the proof of access algorithm so i'm going to skip that and more stuff you just can't see yeah these are just more posts so what we have what we call the hub the hub supports AR, VR, basically any type of content you could imagine, not just video, not just photo, but literal like 3D models and web VR, things like that. And our entire platform is designed to be uh, responsive, not just in terms of mobile and desktop, but also headset as well. And so, you know, there's 20 million uh, Quest 2s out in the wild, and, and next year Apple is entering the headset space as well. So we really see the headset space as a, a long-term strategy, and that's why we uh, have built the infrastructure to enable literally any kind of content, um, even three-dimensional teleportation content. Um, if you can kind of imagine it, it can exist on our hub, um, and so that's what was up this is what the nft marketplace looks like there are we've done three nft sets now we did one with lord butterfly uh we did um the bees and then um our original which is just our deluxe logo um so we we've learned a lot by doing the uh the nft um sets that space has cooled off quite a bit, but uh, you know the infrastructure is there, and we still think that it is a uh, it's a useful technology, still searching for a purpose. Right, we're gonna at least have a game running on our system with uh, Duot the Ragnarok. Ragnarok, game. yeah, the Ragnarok game will use Duot um, NFTs. And there's other uses for NFTs as well. Uh, they can they can store logic on them. They can they can do executable things. So this is. This is a space we're kind of interested in, and it, it just shows that once we build it once, we can give it away basically for free, and anybody can use it. Yep. Um, and these, these can also be apps. They can, they can just as easily run in our app containers that we've built. So any, like he was saying, anything that you can imagine, uh, you can build UI for your own uh, cryptocurrencies, your own businesses, your own communities, or even like, say, a Hive function and post it in an app on Deluxe that we can then, because it's just open source, somebody can say, oh, I can make this a little better. And the entire time, instead of paying somebody to do it, you're getting rewarded because you're posting it on Hive. And uh, I don't know if you can make it out, but that is the bathing suit in question. 
Yeah, that is, that is the bathing suit in, in question. <laughs> This is something new that we just started working on. We started packing it together. Um, wh while, while we've tackled you know, how we envision our network, you know, hub, and we've tackled NFTs, and we've tackled decentralized exchange, we still see a fundamental break in the Hive onboarding process. And so we're going to throw our hat into the ring in terms of how we think onboarding could work. And so, what we're envisioning is um, a QR code that any user would scan, and it would be like your uh, profile card. It would take you to your profile. But on there, if you're not logged in, you could en en enter a onboarding flow that will allow you to create a uh, account but not finish it. And the request will be sent back to whoever... QR code you scanned, and they'll receive a notification to approve that request for account creation. And once they approve it, they can approve it with an account creation token or with three hive, whatever the market rate is. Uh, or they could forward that request onto a sponsorship account, maybe that has hundreds of ACTs, or maybe that grants use of their ACTs to their communities. So creating a system where you onboard a user, but they're not they're not stuck. Their, uh, their request now exists, and you can either approve that request or you can forward that re request on. And they, they can see their status as pending until that request is approved. So really closing the loop on how account creation uh, works for a user without leaving them stranded, we think is really important. Right, and all of these would usually be like face-to-face -face people instead of uh, somebody who's just reading a script to get a whole bunch of emails and get accounts the free way. So hopefully this will enable a lot more tracking and we can see like, oh, this person here is doing a lot of outreach because they're actually generating a lot of accounts that are getting used. So that's coming soon. We're building that now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Honeycomb. Uh, it's launch your own community token with nodes, control your community smart contracts, and control your community API. So Honeycomb is really just about node networks that, that you control. and. Uh, and we have a we just published a proposal. Right, we have a proposal 275, which just takes the funding that we have from last year into next year. So if you're interested in that and approving funds for cool Hivians, go ahead and give us a look. Yeah, I think the last slide is just yep. Hive proposal 275. No QR code. Not that you'd be able to see it anyway. But <laughs> yeah, please do vote for our proposal because, like I said, everything we do is open source. We give it away for free. We want people to clone our, our work. We, we want people to use it. We want people to have their own communities um, and have control over their communities. You know, We're entering an age of AI where these algorithms on these platforms are going to get more and more powerful. And we think you should have choice and freedom in which platforms you're using and which algorithms you're, you're training. Um, and so you having the ability to go choose a, a different front end, we. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Uh, we think that that's very, very valuable. And it's only going to get more valuable. So uh, yeah, please vote for our proposal. And I think that's all we got. Questions? Again, a very clear call to action. Please vote to 275. Um, and uh, you are around since a while, so people probably know you saw this one. And even online, have a look of what they did and try to support it as much as you can. I really enjoyed, uh, and this is my first question, the uh, account creation stuff. Um, I helped so many people to create an account and then, you know, they didn't got it, it was too complex, it was how many keys do I have to store somewhere? Um, most of the people are not getting it at the first time, maybe a few weeks later. So um, how is this be used? Is this free for other communities? Oh yeah, it'll be free, and, and mostly what it does is just loads up a web page where they'll be able to make their own credentials. Uh, they'll then put those credentials into a signer and encrypt it into a memo and send it off to the person they got it from. So it's the only part that they have to actually do is copy their master password down somewhere. It's just choose a username and save that master password somewhere. And as long as the user does that, then that um, onboarder, the, the person recruiting them onto the chain, it goes right back to them and says, hey, this account's ready to be created. 
do you want to approve it? Use but your resources. It gives as well nice feedback when I spread my uh, QR code to get some people into the chain by using this ICR. Now, Peter, whatever, is doing it, and I can use one of my hundreds uh, resource creation mm -hmm. things to exactly. help him. Yep. Exactly. Cool, thanks. More questions from the audience? Perfect. Okay. I guess we did a great job explaining it. You did a wonderful job, and now you are allowed to go out of the sun again. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Uh,